guys, welcome to Sauce Smack. Today we are making soap in the kitchen. Um, I didn't originally intend on making this video, but uh, I thought you guys might be interested on how I make my soap. Um, this is a lye soap. Uh, I've been making soap for years and years, and I was going to make it today anyway, so I hope you enjoy it. Um, soap made with lye is basically all it is is a combination of water, fats, and lye. And when you mix them together properly with the proper amounts, you get soap. You guessed it. But we're doing hot process soap today, um, which means basically we're cooking it in the crock pot. Um, the advantage of doing hot process soap as opposed to mixing, mixing up your soap and letting it rest is, and they call that cold process soap. Hot process soap the soap is ready to use pretty much as soon as it hardens you know you once you're finished in the crock pot you put it in the mold 24 hours later when everything's nice and solid and you cut it up it's ready to go i'd actually recommend waiting a little bit longer um letting the water evaporate out of the soap uh helps it to be harder and it will get more mild over time but the soap formula that we're using today which is one of my own recipes that i've been using for years uh, makes a very moisturizing soap. Um, people who have problem, skin problems, this is a great soap for you guys. Uh, and it's just, it's nice to make your own soap. It's neat, you know? Um, kind of brings you back to your roots a little bit. Now, of course, our soap is not going to be like that old kitchen lye soap that was made, you know, by our foremothers forever ago because back then they didn't have specific formulas um they didn't they couldn't buy their lye already pre-made in a, a proper formulation you know they actually made lye from ash <laughs> and rainwater and so it, there was no exact science in that they did their best but we don't have to do that we've got we've got a scale we've got formula we got you know lye that's properly made and um, so our soaps gonna turn out great uh, and we don't have we don't have any we don't have to guess at it um, so I'll tell you the way that I first started making soap I bought this book called smart soap making by Ann L Watson in her book she makes cold processed soap but she takes the the mystery out of soap making and makes you um, understand that it's not this big, huge, scary thing. I mean, you do need to take precaution when you're messing with lye, no doubt. It will burn you, but so will deep frying, you know, chicken. So you just need to take proper precautions, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, <laughs> a minute ago, I started shooting this video. Well, actually, I thought I was shooting it, and I wasn't. Um, the video, <laughs> the film wasn't running. So, um, I've actually sort of started already. Uh, this, the oils that we're using today is castor oil, avocado oil. And I'm gonna have I'm gonna have a link to my recipe, to the book, um, to the soap calculator I use to come up with this recipe because there's actually some things that you need to know to make sure that your soap is gonna properly uh, saponify, which is what they call it. Uh, we use olive oil. Um, shea butter, mango butter, cocoa butter, and ugh, coconut oil. Now, coconut oil is the oil, the cleansing oil in our soap. If you were to use uh, lard, which I had before, lard is a fantastic cleansing, makes a fantastic cleansing soap. Um, certain oils you must have in your soap formula in order to have a cleansing soap or you're, it's not going to it's not going to get you clean uh coconut oil is one of them lard tallow there's probably a couple more but i i don't can't think of them off the top of my head um as a substitute for lard today we're using mango butter because it has a similar chemical makeup to lard and i just couldn't pro i couldn't find any lard this time I usually make my own um, because I'm picky like that. But anyway, so we're going to start pouring our um, oils into the pot. 
since I accidentally started this video without realizing that it wasn't recording, I've already put the avocado oil and the castor oil in the crock pot, the hot process. So um, we're gonna have this on low and you're gonna start off by putting your liquid oils in the crock pot first. So I've already done avocado and castor oil. And we're gonna do the olive oil, which is 12 ounces. Um, the avocado oil was four ounces and the castor oil was four ounces. But anyway, this will be in a link below. So you won't have to like remember everything I'm saying. Olive oil, 12 ounces. You need to make sure that this is relatively accurate. That's why we have this scale. You know, you're mixing together all sorts of different things. You've got liquids, you've got solids, you've got granules. Everything needs to be properly measured on a scale. Makes it easy. 12. All right. Olive oil in the pot. Now we're gonna talk about we're gonna talk about lye and everything here in a minute. So that was our olive oil. Get this stuff out of the way. So now we're down to we're down to the solids. We're gonna make it easy on ourselves, and we're gonna stick this stuff in the microwave. If you had the time and you don't, you know, don't really like the microwave, you don't want to use the microwave, you can certainly put these, all these oils in the pot uh, non-melted and, you know, wait for the crock pot to do its thing and melt your oils down. You can certainly do that too. But we're not going to do that today because I have a microwave and I'm going to use it. So there's our... One thing you gotta look out for is, whoops, is putting in too much. And that's the reason that you measure all this stuff individually. Because if you've gone too overboard and you've mixed it in with a bunch of other oils, you're not gonna be able to separate back out what you need. So I'm gonna stick this in the microwave. Cocoa butter's some pretty hard stuff, so this is the one that's the toughest to melt down. Mmm, but it smells so good. It smells just like, like chocolate. And who doesn't like chocolate? Who doesn't want some chocolate in their soap? You want to make sure you don't overheat your oils too. You know, you just want them melted. You don't want them, you know, they don't have to be boiling. They don't have to be smoking. Just melted. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, pause the video and I'm going to melt all these down and put them in the pot and we'll be back. Hey guys, we're back. So we've got all of our oils in the crock pot now. I have the crock pot on low. And now we're gonna get to the lye and water process. Lye, very caustic. Do not touch this to your bare skin. You don't want this in your eyes. Anything like that. That's, so today we're using goggles and we're using gloves and if you have kids, pets, make sure they're nowhere near this while you're doing this part, okay? So first off, safety first. We're going to measure out the lie on our scale just like we did with the oils. We want to keep ourselves safe. What do you think? Start off with a fresh uh, bowl. This lie came from uh, Bulk Apothecary. I'll leave a link below to um, where I got all the supplies from so you guys can order things for yourself if you want. So on our lye, uh, we are putting in 6.29 ounces. So just do a slow pour on this, you know, no rush. This is granulated, which is nice. The only problem that you may have is that a little bit of static electricity um, it's probably going to stick. You're not going to be able to get all this back out of the bowl. It's probably going to stick a little bit. Six. We're going to mix up our solution in this stainless steel bowl. Now when water and lye mix, they create heat. 
and uh, the smell of it is really unpleasant. And uh, I usually go outside to mix this up, but today we're gonna do it in the kitchen, you know, so you guys can see what's going on. Okay, so actually today I have some tea that I made. Um, this is a chamomile and lavender herbal tea. I mean, you don't have to use water as your liquid. You can use tea and stuff like that. And actually I'm gonna show you a trick later um, where we're not using just water as our liquid in our soap, but I'll show you that in a minute. So, like I said, I usually take this outdoors to do this. I wouldn't recommend doing it in the house. Uh, I got the windows open behind me, but I wanna do it so you guys can see. Um, so I'm gonna pause this and move the camera closer so y'all can stir this for a minute to make sure that um, it's completely blended. This tea did turn kind of funny color, didn't it? And you probably can't see on video, but it is steaming. So I think that that's mixed up. It's good to use a slotted spoon and make sure that there's no grit sitting on the bottom. All right. So now that we did that, now we're mixing our lye water in with our hot oils in the pot. Basically, you're just gonna pour it in. Just gonna mix the two together. I would not recommend using your crock pot, your soap crock pot, for anything except for soap. Because the lye will eat the enamel a little bit. So keep your gloves and goggles on. Um, I'm going to switch over to a big plastic spoon. Let's see. Let me get a little closer. There we go. See, as you can see right now, it's, you know, doesn't look like much. It's kind of just liquidy. But, and you could just keep stirring this by hand, but that would take forever for the soap to come to um, what they call trace, which is basically when the, the lye formula and the oil come together. Enter the stick mixer or stick blender or whatever you call this thing. Uh, we're going to use this to accelerate the mixing process, get the soap going. Um, this thing this thing I've had some problems with in the past, so hopefully it'll work okay. But you'll be able to see how, um, how this looks as it goes to what they call trace. Uh-oh, see what I mean? So what you want it to look like when it's reached um, a point where you can stop mixing it is you want it to kind of look like, you know, thin pudding or thick custard or something like that. And this is when you can stop blending and it'll be just fine. And now, um, in the liquid part of what I made, with the lye, the, the liquid in the lye, I didn't use as much water as it called for because I want to use the other part of the liquid as milk. And there is some other way to mix milk and lye together, but I don't really know how to do it. It's kind of complicated. So what I do is I just wait until we reach trace, which is what this is, or close enough, and then I add the milk. So we're gonna add some milk to this and keep stirring it up and I'll be right back. All right, so I got my milk. Um, I warmed this milk up to, you know, I don't know, not scalding, but warm enough that we're not gonna cool down our soap formula when we put this in. As you can see, just in the small amount of time that I've spent warming this milk up, the soap is already starting to get a bit thicker. So we're gonna go ahead and pour our milk in. And the milk is gonna add a really nice creaminess more moisture to the soap and that's what we want. We want some nice creamy moist soap. Something makes your skin feel good. All right so our soap is set. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it up on high. 
And the soap's going to go through a couple of different um, stages as it is on its way to being done. So what I'm going to do is we'll do a little video every few minutes. You can kind of see how the soap goes through different stages and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. All right. All right, guys. So it's been 10 minutes since we got this started and uh, don't panic because <laughs> This soap's gonna look like, holy crap, we have destroyed it. It's falling apart. It doesn't look right anymore. It's gonna go through some of these awkward stages before it gets to where it's going. So don't worry about it, just stir it up. Like I said, this is 10 minutes in. Just stir it up, put the lid back on, and we'll keep it going and we'll check it back again. Check on it again in about 10 more minutes. Okay guys, so we're at the 20 minute mark and you can see that the soap is starting to sort of build this crust up around the edges here. This is actually the soap cooking. So you want to just kind of keep that stirred um, so it'll cook evenly. So like I said, this is the 20 minute mark and we're going to keep going. Um, we will, like I said, I'm going to show you what it looks like every 10 minutes. So there you go. Okay guys, we're at the 30 minute stage and let me scoot this in a little bit more. We're starting to get past out of the ugly duckling stage. Um, you can see that we're getting more and more of like this fluffy, lighter colored looking stuff. And that's actually the soap that's um, cooked. It's coming off the edges. I have stirred this twice in the past 10 minutes. So that's where we are now. And this is, like I said, this is 30 minutes in and it's starting to come back together again. It's starting to not look like a big fat mistake anymore. <laughs> so anyway, um, this is 30 minutes in and we'll check back again in 10 minutes. All right guys, so we're 40 minutes in and you can really start seeing some action now. I didn't stir this down so I could show, show y'all that, uh, you know, of course this cooks out from the edges. Um, so we're starting to get some nice, fluffy, soapy action going on. And just keep stirring it, you know. You probably should stir it a bit more than what I'm stirring it. But I just wanted to show you what it was going to look like when, you know, it starts cooking up on the sides. But keep it stirred down, nice and even. Look at that, it's going to be so pretty. I'm so excited. I love making soap. You know, you can, you can, uh, oh my gosh, the soap formulas are never ending. You can make recipes that have all sorts of different stuff in it. And I mean, you can do additives afterwards, like you can add different colors, you can layer them up, you can put different smells in them. Today we're doing patchouli in our soap, but we're going to do all that afterwards, after the soap is finished. And we're coming along nicely. You can see that it's, you know, it's all starting to come back together. It doesn't look like, you know, lumpy, oily weirdness anymore. So we'll check back again in 10 minutes. Hey guys, we are at the 50 minute mark. I just wanted to show you, I do have a lid on this, but as you see, it's missing a handle. I'm having to pull it off with a fork and, uh, you know, just want to save y'all from having to watch that. Uh, so definitely have um, a lid on this as you're cooking it, but see how it's starting to get nice and fluffy. We're making soap here, folks, right in your kitchen. I just want to remind you guys that until this is completely done and cooled down and all that stuff, it still can burn you, not just from the heat, but um, you know, the lye is still caustic in this. So don't let your guard down. Don't, you know, start sticking your fingers in it or anything like that. You need to uh, still be wearing your gloves. Safety, safety. All right. Lid's going back on and we'll check it again in 10 more minutes. Hey guys, so we're back and I just want to show you uh, once we've reached about this one hour level, you really need to be paying attention close because you know, they may say that a watch pot never boils, but this watch pot may boil over if you don't watch it. So, uh, yeah, at this point it starts to get pretty fluffy and 
you know, it wants to, wants to kind of crawl right out of the pot. So, but we're going to keep stirring because we're getting closer and closer. One hour mark. Hey guys, we're an hour and 10 minutes in and you can see this stuff is really bubbling. You gotta really watch it because it's it wants to come out. <laughs> but once this bubbly stage is over, um, it's gonna start to deflate. And the uh, it'll start to kind of come downward. And I think we might be getting close to that stage. It's gonna start getting a little darker too. But um, Basically, you know, you want to keep an eye on it right now because it could bowl out of the pot. But we're going to keep going and I'm thinking probably in the next 20 minutes or so we're going to see a big change. Hey guys, so uh, I went ahead and turned off the crock pot. We have reached the greasy mashed potato stage. Isn't that a funny way of describing this? But anyway, this soap is done. Uh, I'm trying to cool it down a little bit because it's still boiling, but you see how, I mean, greasy mashed potatoes, right? That's how you know you, your, your soap is done. And now you can pour it right into your mold or actually, yeah, pour it in your mold and then uh, let it cool down for a few minutes before uh, we add our essential oils or you know the essential oils might just kind of burn out of it but as you can see as I'm stirring this some of the bubbles are coming out and that is cooked soap baby cooked soap so anyway I'm gonna grab a mold and I'll be back in a minute all right I got my mold here this is just a silicone baking pan it makes for a great soap mold because you know, once the soap is set, all you have to do is kind of pull it away from the edges. So, oven mitts, and we're gonna try to get this soap out of this mold. Get this ready to go. Looks kind of funky, doesn't it? All right. Now, every time I've made this soap, this is what it's looked like when it is done. And I have done these, you know, stick a piece of soap up to my tongue test uh, to see if it's finished, and it is. Um, but if you're not quite confident in that, you can always get pH strips and to find out for sure if it's finished. Or there's a couple other ways to do it, but I'm not quite familiar with those. Um, but anyway, I just kind of smushed that down. But I'm gonna wait, wait a minute, and then I'm gonna add my uh, essential oils into it and like I said we're using patchouli today patchouli I couldn't believe my husband wanted patchouli oil I asked him what scent he wanted and he said patchouli and I was like okay so um, I'm gonna let this cool for just a minute before I add the patchouli oil hey guys wasn't that exciting we made our own soap in the kitchen in the crock pot um, it may be a little intimidating the first time you guys make it, but I promise you it will turn out great. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and add our essential oils to it, and then we'll be done. And then um, tomorrow I'll shoot one more little video showing um, taking it out of this and uh, cutting it up. Because later on it'll be a, a lighter color. And the reason that mine is this dark brown color is because I put the... Uh, I put this tea in there instead of water. If you were to put water in here, it would be um, a much lighter color. But that's okay, because it's kind of a natural thing, you know. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my essential oils. Basically, all I'm gonna do is just pour the oil in and stir it around. Um, and that's it. Some oils have a really low flash point, and if you add them when the soap is too hot, basically just going to burn all your scent off. So it's really better to wait. And you know, citrus scents, they don't really work in soap very well. You'll lose the scent pretty quickly. Let's see. For the formula I made today, it calls one and a half ounces. I never, ever, ever add one and a half ounces of scent to this. For one, it's too expensive. 
Um, for another, you know, I don't want my soap to smell too, too, too strong because believe it or not, a lot of soap has its own natural, wholesome scent of its own. So we don't mind keeping the scent a little bit lighter. Anyway, that's it. Um, we'll come back tomorrow and we'll shoot one more little video showing you guys how the soap turned out. So take care. We'll see you tomorrow. Hey guys, welcome back through the magic of video. It's been 24 hours and our soap is done. I went ahead and took it out of the mold. Um, I cut it with this pastry cutter. This works great. About four or five hours in when the soap is hard enough that you can cut through it without, you know, it deforming it or, you know, it getting funky on you, slimy. And then today we took it out of the mold and this is what we got. Isn't it beautiful? Smells good. Um, it's still spongy. Like if I squeeze on this, it's still very spongy. It's still soft. You can use it right now. It's done. You can use it. But I would recommend letting it dry out for at least two weeks. Um, if you have a greenhouse, go stick it in your greenhouse. Uh, stick it in a sunny window. Somewhere it's, get, it's gonna get heat and ventilation. If you have a dehydrator, that works great too. Um, I mean, you might could even stick it in the oven very, 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 very low. Cause if you warm it up much, it's gonna melt. Um, but besides that, that's it. You've made fantastic. You made your own soap. You can give it away as gifts. Uh, people would love this and it's so luxurious. You'll never want to use store-bought soap ever again. This will spoil you rotten, I guarantee it. But anyway, that's our show. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope this was informative. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the show and I'll see you next time on Sauce Mac. Don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe.